So I'm here in Hobart with Otso Oberskainen from the University of Helsinki. He's published a couple of papers in Methods and Ecology and Evolution, which have just gone in, in press in October 2015. Congratulations. Thanks. Um, and uh, thanks for joining us. So um, could I just start by asking you uh, what these papers are about? Well, these papers present statistical methods for community ecology. So basically they are meant for data that could be analyzed by ordinations, but these are like model-based approaches that are alternatives for ordinations that we think give more out of the same kind of data. So if you have collected data on species abundances or presence absences on a set of sites, and then measure some environmental covariates on those sites, and then you want to relate those to the species occurrences, that's the kind of data that the methods are aimed for. But kind of the key here is that these methods work for sparse data, so you can have rare species, because we are kind of modeling both the species at the, and the communities at the same time. Right. And then the second really, really key factor is that the models tell you not only about the relationship between the environmental variables and then the species responses, but also about the correlations between the species, so that which species are together, which are not together. Right. Okay, so that's the general idea of the joint, sometimes called joint, statistic, joint species distribution models. Exactly. So that's kind of that general idea. And so what, was, what were the specific contributions in your two MEE papers? Well, the methodologically what we are doing is, is, what we allow for is to analyze data on large communities. Mm -hmm. So you can have 100 species. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you have 100 species, then your co occurrence matrix is like 100 times 100 matrix. So you have kind of too many correlations to estimate without any structure. Right. So what we do here is to put a latent factor structure mm. that, that enables the estimation of these kind of big matrices right. okay, from sparse data. And in one of our papers, uh, we do this in a kind of a hierarchical way that we have forests, within a forest we have plots, within plots, plots we have sampling units, right. and then we ask about co-occurrence in these three uh, hierarchical levels. Right. So we kind of ask that which species are found from the same forests or within forests which are found from the same plots and so on and so on. Right. Whereas in the other paper we do the same thing. So just, sorry, so just on that one. So I'm stuck on this one. Yeah. So, so it's multi-level designs yeah. where if you had one variable you'd probably do like a mixed effects model with a random term for exactly. plot, a random term for yeah. this. But because you got multiple variables um, you need some sort of multivariate random effects. Thing. Exactly. And, yeah. and you're using latent variables as a way to do that. Yes. Yeah. So it kind of does two things at the same time. That if you would analyze single species, mm. just single species data, you would need to have a random effect at the level of, let's say, plots and forests, mm. because your data wouldn't otherwise be independent or the residuals wouldn't be independent. Yep. Uh, so, so including the latent factors does that trick, that it, it picks it for the non-independence. Mm -hmm. But additionally, it gives something more, mm -hmm. and what is something more is this co-occurrence among species. Okay. Because the random effects are not just for the individual species, but also for their okay. co-occurrences. So, okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay, so then there was a, the other paper. So that was the multi-level uh, random effects yeah. uh, with latent variables, and then there was a spatial uh, random effects, so spatial latent variables. Exactly. So that what the other paper does is kind of the same thing, but in a spatially explicit setting. Right. Because you know sometimes your sampling units are clustered in this kind of a hierarchical manner. Mm. Then you just use the methods from the first paper, but sometimes they are just like spread continuously in space. Mm. And in that case, it's more natural to use, uh, in a single species context, you would use a uh, uh, spatially structured residual. Mm -hmm. So what this paper does is to do the same thing but again at the community level. All right. Okay. Cool. So, but do we do we need this sp uh, spatial stuff? Why not just assume everything's independent? Okay, that's a that's a good question. We we need the spatial stuff for two reasons. Mm -hmm. One is that if we don't account for it, mm -hmm. then we kind of uh, misspecify the model by by assuming that the basically that the residuals are independent, mm -hmm. and they are not in spatial data and then simply your inference goes wrong. You, you might, for example, might think that your covariates have strong effects, which is not true. But then the other thing, reason to including space, is that it's interesting to see at okay. what spatial scale the correlations appear, right. because that can tell something about ecological processes. Right. And also, including space in the model can greatly improve the predictive power of 
the model, like we show in the paper, that we got much better predictive validation data if we include this spatial latent factors in the model. Yeah. So it, it kind of allows the model to, when making predictions, to borrow information from the nearby sites, like it does in a single species case. But in the multi-species case, you, it also borrows information about from the other species in the surrounding locations. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, so I guess who should read these papers? <laughs> well, I think any community ecologist who has this kind of data mm. and who has, uh, let's say, used coordinations to analyze the data, mm. but wants to get a bit more out of it, like a more kind of a ability to, to do predictions, to do the diagnostics, and, that, and a bit more kind of mechanistic understanding of what is structuring the data. Okay, yeah, right. So on the mechanistic understanding thing, so I guess that's thinking of it as if you use models for the analysis, then you can try and get at the, you can do a better job of trying to get at the mechanism. Is that kind of where you're coming from with the Yes, of, of course, of course, I mean, this is just a big generalized hierarchical linear mixed model. Yeah. So there are no actual mechanisms in the model, mm -hmm. but still the parameters of the model, you can interpret them. Mm -hmm. Like you can interpret them in like, how does this environmental covariate influence the occurrences of, of this species or, or the species in this community more generally. Mm -hmm. And also, which species are associated to each other. Mm -hmm. And because it's a it's model-based inference, you can you cannot validate the model. Like mm -hmm. with ordinations, it's, it's really difficult to see whether your approach is valid or not. Mm -hmm. Whether the assumptions, underlying assumptions are, are in line with the data, which is also then tells whether your inference is, is valid or not. But with these approaches, you can, for example, generate predictive data for validation sites that you didn't visit. You right. can see if the model does a good job or not. Yeah, right. right. Look, you're preaching to the choir on that one. <laughs> um, so I was curious uh, what you're thinking of doing next. So is, there, um, is, is this sort of, is this all done for you? Or is there sort of, do you see more things that need doing? Oh, the, this is a really long-term project for, for me and my group that we published the first papers on joint species distribution models uh, about five years ago. We I think you've come a long way since then. Well, yeah, that's, that's right, it's, that's it's right. Going up and up. <laughs> and, and of course, like you very well know, you know, we are not the only, only group doing this, but there are like lots of papers around this topic coming out now, yeah. which, is, which is really great. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what, what I started with was these sparse data models that how do you, how do you borrow information from, from other species yeah. when you are parameterizing the model for one rare species. That's yeah. what I started with. And then I, after that, I got interested in this latent variable approaches to, to be able to do co-occurrence. Okay. Yeah. But there are still, you know, there is a huge amount of things that you can extend these models. For example, the, the papers that we published, they deal with presence-absence data only. Well, our MATLAB package that deals with, can, that can handle abundance data, mm -hmm. but like building more link functions is an obvious thing to, to do. Right. And another thing that I'm really interested in doing now is to, is to see how this co-occurrence among species, which is kind of an indication of interactions, mm -hmm. how that depends on the environmental characteristics. For example, do we see that species that co occur species that compete with each other, do we see, see the influence of competition equally in all kinds of environments, mm -hmm. or is it more strongly expressed, let's say, in environments where resources are, are scarce? Yeah. So we are developing these kind of extensions. Wow, sounds hard. It'd also need a lot of data, I think. Like, you'd need a lot of information to be able to tell. So you're saying, you're basically saying covariances from a statistical perspective, you're saying the covariances are changing in, in different places. Yes. And so, yeah, I, f I feel like it might need a lot of data to do that. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. That of course, the more refined is the question, the more you, you need data. Mm. So that even, even just like estimating co-occurrence mm. per se can be quite data demanding. Mm. But, but like in, in one of the papers, we, we compare the co-occurrence patterns in managed forests versus mm. natural forests. Yeah. So that's kind of asking the same question by fitting the model twice, okay, to yeah. different data sets. Mm. Now we, in the next step, we want to fit only one model yeah, okay. and see how co-occurrence is, you know, uh, what kind of evidence we have that the co-occurrence matrices are really different in these two different envi environments. Yeah, fair enough. Well, thanks a lot for your time. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.